subscribe and hit the bell icon. The electric eel. Oh, hi everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look at this, Hero. It's a boat I made out of leaves. Now, time to test it out. Hmm, it looks kind of lonely. I know. I'll make a boat for you too, Hero. There, now we can have a boat race. We'll start blowing our boats on the count of three. Ready, Hero? One, two, three. Ah! Could it be some kind of snake? We must have disturbed it with our boat race. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is an electric eel. An electric eel? Can it make electricity? It sure can. An electric eel is a kind of fish that uses electricity to stun its prey and defend itself from predators. The electric eel can produce electricity because it has special organs that allow it to store power, just like batteries. That's a really neat skill. What else does the electric eel use its electricity for? The electric eel has poor eyesight, so it uses electricity to sense its surroundings and find prey. The electric eel does this by releasing a low-level electric charge, which it uses like a radar. I see. What kind of food do electric eels eat? Electric eels eat sea creatures like fish, crabs, and shrimps. Some also eat small animals like frogs and birds. Electric eels live in South America, where they can be found in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. Hmm. It's too dangerous for the fish in our pond to live with the electric eel. We should bring the electric eel back to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the Orinoco River, Junior Rangers. We are at one of the longest rivers in South America. Ah, I see you've brought an electric eel with you. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We're here to bring it back home. That's great, Leo. But you must be careful not to touch the electric eel directly. If it feels threatened, it might zap you with strong electricity. Oh, dear. We'll be careful, Ranger Rocky. Electric eels prefer shallow water along streams and rivers where it is easier for them to surface. Although they have gills, electric eels are mainly air breathers. This means electric eels cannot survive if they do not rise to the water's surface to breathe air through their mouths. Electric eels also like to live in calm, muddy waters near the riverbed where they can stay hidden from prey and predators. So if you want to find a home for the electric eel, keep a lookout for calm water. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. We're almost there. Whoa! Whoa. Ah, it's a river monster. That's not a river monster, Leo. That's an anaconda. Anacondas are the largest snakes in the world. They also have large appetites and prey on anything they can eat. It's wrapping itself around the float. The anaconda must think the jeep is food. No, Hero. The anaconda can swallow you whole. We could get the electric eel to help us. It can zap the anaconda and scare it away. Be careful, Katie. I have these rubber gloves to protect me from the eel's electricity. 
I have to make sure I don't touch the water with my skin. <clears throat> the electric eel is too heavy. Let me help you, Katie. There it goes. The electric eel zapped the anaconda. Look, it's letting go of the float. Now, let's put the eel back in the tank and get out of here. We did it. We found the electric eel's home. Great job, everyone. Hooray! Yay! an electric eel in our garden. We learned that electric eels produce electricity to stun prey and scare away predators. We also learned that electric eels live in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. So we went to the Orinoco River and brought the electric eel back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The scalloped hammerhead shark. Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. <coughs> oh, this? I found this seashell at the beach. I've got a whole box full of seashells. If you put the seashell close to your ear, you can hear the sea. Here, listen. <coughs> it sounds just like the sea, doesn't it? <coughs> What's the matter, Hero? Hmm? I think there's something underneath the seashells. It's a fish. Look at the shape of its head. It's so weird. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find any information about the fish? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The fish you found is actually a young scalloped hammerhead shark. The shark gets its name from the unusual shape of its head, which looks like a hammer. The shark's head helps it to find prey. There are special sense organs spread out over the wide head of the scalloped hammerhead shark. These organs help the shark to pick up electrical signals that are given off by animals underwater. Wow! Just like a radar! So, what animals does the scalloped hammerhead shark eat? Scalloped hammerhead sharks mostly eat fish like sardines and herring, and sometimes animals like squid and octopus. Bigger hammerhead sharks even eat smaller sharks. But since the shark you found is still young, it prefers to eat small fish and shrimp. By the way, scalloped hammerhead sharks live in the warm tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Hmm. The pond in our garden isn't big enough for the shark to swim in. We should bring the shark back to its home in the ocean. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the ocean, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a young scalloped hammerhead shark. The shark looks a little cramped in that tank. There you go, little friend. Much better now. Is it safe to swim with the shark, Ranger Rocky? Scalloped hammerhead sharks normally do not attack people unless they are threatened. However, 
you should still keep your distance, especially from the adult sharks. If you want to find the young shark's home, you should keep a lookout for seashores. Young scalloped hammerhead sharks prefer to live in large groups near the seashores of islands. This is because the water is shallow there, which means the water is less deep. The shallow water helps keep large predators away. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. What is it, Hero? Hey, where did the shark go? Let me have a look. I see the hammerhead shark. It's chasing shrimp underwater. Oh no, the shark is caught in the net. The net must have come from that boat over there. I think it's a shrimp trawler. What's a shrimp trawler? A shrimp trawler is a fishing boat designed to catch shrimp. Unfortunately, other marine animals are sometimes caught in the nets by accident. These marine animals are called bycatch. We've got to save our friend from becoming bycatch. Katie and Hero, you stay here and watch the jeep, okay? What do you think, Hero? Should Leo have all the fun alone? Phew, that was close. Thanks, Katie and Hero. I could not have done it without you two. No problem, Leo. It was actually Hero's idea. We did it! We found the young hammerhead shark's home. Great work, everyone! Yay! Hooray! a young scalloped hammerhead shark in our garden. We learned that scalloped hammerhead sharks come from the tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. So we went to the ocean and brought the young shark back to its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Orca. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Look at my digital voice recorder, Hero. I'm recording the chirping of birds. Do you hear that? That's the first sound I recorded. I think it comes from a sparrow. Let's try to record more birds. Listen, there's another bird. What a beautiful song it is singing. Do you hear that, Hero? I've never heard that sound before. What bird makes such a sound? Let's find out. What is it here? <gasps> Whoa! Hello, Junior Ranger. Ranger Rocky, what are you doing here? I rescued this orca, and I'm on my way to release it in the sea. Perhaps you Junior Rangers would like to join me. We would love to, Ranger Rocky. Let's surprise my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Let's take a photo of the orca and send it to her. Hi, Katie. So what did you find? Hi, Leo. It seems that orcas are also called killer whales. However, they are actually more closely related to dolphins than whales. People also call them wolves of the sea because orcas like to hunt in packs, just like wolves do. Orcas can be found in all oceans of the world. Orcas from different areas eat different types of food. Some hunt for fish, some prefer squid, and others eat seals or sharks. The orca that Ranger Rocky rescued comes from New Zealand. And orcas there mainly eat sharks and stingrays. 
the New Zealand orcas may become endangered because there are fewer than 200 of them left. Maybe that's why Ranger Rocky is taking the orca home. I'm really excited to join Ranger Rocky and take the orca back home. Come and join us. Yes, let's go. See you downstairs. Ranger Rocky, why did you rescue this orca? This orca was kept in a tank so that people could get to see it up close. Many people are curious about orcas, but it's not easy to find them in the wild. So some zoos and theme parks put orcas on display. Orcas are huge animals that need a lot of space to swim freely. In fact, swimming long distances is important to an orca's health but they can't do it if they are kept in a tank. Orcas in the wild get to move around freely. Their health is better, they feel happier, and so they live longer. We should look for an area without boats or fishing nets. Orcas sometimes get hit by boats or caught in nets. We'll find a good place for this orca. Look, there's something on the beach. It's an orca. Oh, no! We have to act quickly, or it will die. I've informed the whale rescuers. They have equipment to lift beach whales and orcas back into the water. Do we just wait here for them? It might take too long for the rescuers to arrive. Do you have any spades? Yes, yes we, do. we do! Great! We'll dig a hole under each of the orcas' flippers so that they can hang freely. Yes, yes Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Is this deep enough, Ranger Rocky? Yes, that's good, Leo. Now we need to fill these holes with seawater. Here, use these buckets. Okay, Ranger Rocky. Excellent, Junior Rangers. Now we have to place wet towels over the orca to keep it wet and cool. We'll make sure these towels are wet, Ranger Rocky. Now we'll pour water on the towels to keep them wet. We just need to be careful not to get any water into the orca's blowhole because the orca breathes through it. Yes, yes Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Ranger Rocky, the rescue team is here. Great. They will take care of this orca. Let's continue on our journey to find our orca's home. We did it. We found the orca a home. Great job, everybody. Rocky rescued an orca from captivity. We learned that orcas need to live freely in the ocean. So we joined Ranger Rocky and brought the orca back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Reef Manta Ray. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look at my kite. It's flying like a big bird in the sky. Oops, the wind got my kite. Wait for me, Hero. You found my kite, Hero. Hey, it's a water tank. Look at that. There's an animal swimming in the tank. What a weird looking animal. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? You're just in time, Leo. The animal you found is a manta ray. 
There are only two types of manta rays, and this one is a reef manta ray. The reef manta ray is the smallest of the two, but an adult reef manta ray can still reach a width of up to five meters. Whoa, that's really big! But the reef manta ray we found is much smaller than that. It's probably a baby reef manta ray, Leo. Newly born reef manta rays are just over a meter wide. Reef manta rays are found along the coasts in the warm tropical waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. I see. So what do reef manta rays eat? Reef manta rays are filter feeders. They simply open their mouths while swimming and feed on small animals from the water, such as shrimp and krill. Reef manta rays are independent creatures. After birth, a baby reef manta ray, which is called a pup, receives no further care from its parents. That means the baby manta ray doesn't need to go back to its mother. But the tank in our garden is too small for it to live in. We should bring the reef manta ray back to the ocean. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Ranger Rocky. Welcome to the Indian Ocean, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a reef manta ray pup. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We're trying to find a nice place for the pup to live in. Reef manta ray pups tend to stay around coral reefs near the coast. Coral reefs provide many good places for the pups to hide from predators, like sharks and orcas. Unfortunately, Reef manta rays are hunted for their meat and supposed value in traditional Chinese medicine. This means reef manta rays are in danger of disappearing forever because of overfishing. What is overfishing, Ranger Rocky? Overfishing is when humans catch too many fish so that not enough fish remain. So if you want to help the reef manta ray find a new home, you should look for coral reefs along the coast. And avoid fishing boats. That's right, Junior Rangers. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Hey, look. There are some creatures floating on the sea. They are sea jellies. Sea jellies are marine animals that swim in the ocean. Turtles and large fish hunt it for food. There are so many of them. Hey. What's that up ahead? It's Ranger Rocky. He's surrounded by a lot of sea jellies. That must be a sea jelly bloom. A sea jelly bloom is when a huge number of sea jellies appear suddenly. Ranger Rocky, are you okay? Hello, Leo. I am stuck in a sea jelly bloom. If I drive my jet ski, I might harm the sea jellies. So I have nowhere to go. Don't worry, Ranger Rocky. We'll help you. I have a plan. First, let's get a bit closer. Okay, Katie and Hero, I need to borrow both your backpacks. You want to use our propellers? Good plan, brother. Okay, here I go. Hello, Junior Ranger. Here, Ranger Rocky. You can use these to fly to our Jeep. Thank you, Leo. Hi, Ranger Rocky. Thank you, Junior Rangers. I'm glad I got out of that jello-like situation. You're welcome, Ranger Rocky. We did it. We found a safe home for the reef manta ray. Hooray! Yay! We found a reef manta ray pup 
up in our garden. We learned that the reef manta ray lives along the coasts of the Indian and Pacific Oceans and that they like to live alone around coral reefs. So we went to a coral reef and found the manta ray a new home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Leafy Sea Dragon. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look what I got, Hero. It's a marine aquarium, and it has special saltwater plants in it. Look at that pretty seaweed, Hero. It looks like it has eyes. <gasps> it moved. Did you see that, too? What do you think? Is this seaweed or an animal? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So what is it? You won't believe it, Leo. It's an animal. The name of this animal is the leafy sea dragon. It's a type of fish. Leafy sea dragons are similar to the more famous seahorses. It looks more like seaweed than a seahorse. I wonder if it eats seaweed. No, it doesn't. The leafy sea dragon is a carnivore, which means it feeds on other animals like tiny shellfish and shrimp. It has a mouth that looks like a straw, which it uses to suck up its food. So there's no food for the leafy sea dragon in the aquarium. The aquarium isn't a good home for the leafy sea dragon anyway. It needs to live in the sea, where there's plenty of food for it. And the best place for leafy sea dragons is in the waters of southern Australia. That's the only place in the world where they can be found, and also where they can be safe. There are laws in Australia to protect leafy sea dragons. People are not allowed to remove these rare animals from the sea without permission. Then let's take the leafy sea dragon back home so it can stay where it's protected. Come and join us. Yes, let's go. See you downstairs. Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the beach. Ah, I see you have a leafy sea dragon with you today. It was in my marine aquarium, Ranger Rocky. I thought it was a piece of seaweed. Leafy sea dragons use their appearance to help them hide from predators. They live in or around seaweed beds and seagrass meadows, so marine animals don't notice them. Healthy leafy sea dragons can even change their color to look more like the seaweed they are hiding in. Leafy sea dragons can swim, but very slowly. They use the fins on their necks and tails to move and turn. Despite being slow swimmers, they can travel long distances to look for food. Leafy sea dragons are always looking for food. They have no stomach, which means food goes through their bodies quickly. Because of that, they have to eat constantly. That is why it is not easy for leafy sea dragons to survive outside of their natural home. That's one of the reasons why we're taking this leafy sea dragon back to its home, Ranger Rocky. Look for an area where the seawater is clean. If the water is polluted, the seaweed and seagrass in the water will die. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Ranger Rocky! You got here fast. What's going on? I want to make sure nobody comes too close. A storm just hit this area, and it washed a heap of seaweed ashore. Leafy sea dragons live among seaweed, so they often get washed ashore with the seaweed when the waters get rough. Oh, no! So there might be leafy sea dragons lying in the seaweed? I'm afraid so, Katie. I'm looking through the seaweed to find them. I want to put them back in the water quickly, so that they'll survive. 
We'll help you, Ranger Rocky. That would be great. Come in. Look, I just found a leafy sea dragon in this pile of seaweed. If you find any leafy sea dragons, put them in here. Yes, yes Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Good job, Junior Rangers. We found all the leafy sea dragons. Since we're taking our leafy sea dragon back to its natural home, we can also bring these, Ranger Rocky. That's wonderful, Leo. Please, take this. Look at how much sea grass there is. This will be a great home for the leafy sea dragons. There they go. Stay safe, leafy sea dragons. We did it. We found the leafy sea dragons a home. Great job, everybody. Hooray! Yay! We found a leafy sea dragon in my marine aquarium. We learned that leafy sea dragons are very rare animals that look like seaweed. They hide in seaweed so that other animals can't spot them. And we took the leafy sea dragon home to Australia because leafy sea dragons are protected there. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hola, exploradores juniors. Check out our Spanish channel by clicking the link in the description below. See you there.